Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, as well from my side. Uh, as Fred has mentioned, I have been asked to give you a little bit an introduction to this conference by providing you an overview on the concept of 61850. Uh, before we go into the different aspects of 61850, I would just like to remind where we started with, with 61850. 61850, <laughs> the original scope we had was really dealing with the, within the substation. So basically, the scope was to cover all the aspects of communication between the different levels of equipment that we may have in a substation, like station level equipment, the bay level equipment, control and protection devices, and more or less new with 61850, the possibility to integrate as well the process bus, the, the, the direct communication down to the switch gear, to the equipment out in the switch yard. So that was really the scope of 61850 where we started. At that time the standard was called communication networks and systems in the substations. Over the years when we had drafted more or less the first version of 61850, people <laughs> have identified the possibilities, the power behind the concept, and more and more there was the requirement, the request to extend 61850 to other domains. So today basically we cover more or less everything what is communication within the field of the power system. So not only within the substation, but we also included communication between substations. We included communication of hydropower plants, control and monitoring of hydropower plants can be done with 61850. Integration of distributed energy resources, wind turbines, as Alex mentioned before. And we also covered the communication towards the control center area, control center, regional control center. So 61850, the scope has been largely expanded and as a consequence, the, the title of the standard series has also been changed. It's now communication network and systems for power utility automation. The reason that we have power here is mainly that it's an IEC standard. IEC is doing standards for electrical applications, so that's why we more or less somehow exclude other utilities like water or waste there, but in principle it could also be used in these domains. Okay, so with that, now let's have a look what are really the basic concepts of 61850. And those of you that are already a little bit familiar, or those of you that have read Packworld magazine over the time, you probably know that both Alex as well as myself, we promote all this, that 61850 is much more than just a communication protocol. Very often still beginners or people that are not so much familiar with 61850, they believe it's just like another protocol, like DNP3, like 875-101, it's just another protocol. That's by far not enough. So 61850 basically has three main elements in, and we will discuss these elements in more details along this one-day session here with a different presentation. 61850, of course, deals with communication, but 61850, as mentioned, has more. As an example, it includes the definition of the semantic data models. So it not only covers the aspect how you transmit an information from A to B, it also covers the aspect what exactly is the information that you transmit. So it defines the semantic objects, the data objects, with the semantic, with the data structure that you have in a power uh, world. And the third, also important element part, is the complete engineering process that is behind 61850 that allows you to do an engineering, a configuration of your system uh, very much automated with different tools talking to each other. That's also one of the key elements to do some automated testing later on, what we'll certainly also discuss. So these are the three basic <coughs> elements that we have in 61850. On top of that, we have, as well as part of the standard specifications that define how we do the conformance testing of these uh, components that are developed as part of 61850. Okay, now let's have a little bit a closer look into these three elements to introduce to you the basis. I will not go into deep details in these areas because we have many 
more presentations later on addressing the different elements there. Talking about communication, so basically this is a typical possible communication architecture as we have it in a substation and as it is supported by 61850. So we speak about our station level devices where we have HMI, station controllers, we have gateways or routers that interface to the control center. We have then a station bus, what we typically call station bus, that connects these station level <coughs> devices with the bay level devices, protection devices, bay controllers, but that also may support communication between the bay level devices using some of the concepts Alex has mentioned before. Then, and that was new with 61850, we added the possibility of what we called at that time process bus, which is more or less a, further, a digital interface going further down into the process, enabling intelligent switch gear to directly have the possibility to support the communication interface, supporting non-conventional CTVTs, but also conventional CTs with standalone merging units, so that the analog to digital conversion is directly down, down in the switch yard. In this picture, I show station bus, process bus as two independent networks. 61850 is open on that. In principle, it allows all kinds of communication network topologies, and we will certainly discuss that in more details later on during this conference. Talking about communication, it's of course not only the physical communication architecture, there are also some communication concepts behind. 61850 is mainly a client-server driven communication approach. So we have basically our devices. In these devices we may have some of them that implement what we call a client functionality. Typically <coughs> it's the gateways, it's the station controller, the local HMIs. And they are talking to what we call servers. They can request data from the servers. The servers can spontaneously report events up to the clients. The, the servers are typically implemented in the protection devices in the bay controllers. So basically, uh, a client also can have multiple associations with servers open. So it's not like a master-slave system where it's always controlled by one device, so basically once the communication or the association is established, the server by itself can report the information at any time. So this is the major part of all the communication services that are defined in 61850, and that's what is typically used for the SCADA applications, control of switch gear, transmission of events, but also sequence of events can be done over this, or file transfer. However, this is not necessarily suitable for the time-critical applications that are really the change of, change of 61850 like Alex has introduced it. So that's why we have a second set of communication concepts and we call that publisher-subscriber communication and we typically use it for the time-critical information exchange. The concept is that somewhere we have data that needs to be published to a couple of other applications that are interested in receiving this application. So we talk here about a publisher that is sending data to a subscriber. Goose messaging, sample value transmission are the two key services that apply into this area. And as already mentioned, this is mainly used for everything that is critical, time critical in a substation, but it's also used for peer-to-peer -peer communication between various devices in the bay level typically. So it's used as an example for applications for tripping of circuit breakers, but also transmit information we need for interlocking to implement any kind of protection schemes. And the sample values, of course, is used to transmit the digitally converted data from typical merging unit up to the protection device. So this is the concept of goose messaging. So basically, we can look at GOOS as a kind of a virtual wire. So it's typically used everywhere in your substation where in a conventional system you have a wire going from a binary output in one device to a binary input in another device that is then used as a status information to implement a certain scheme. 61850 GOOS basically allows to replace, replace this wire with a communication message 
that is sent over the communication network. The application, Alex has already shown that picture, where one of the applications is this distribution by spot protection or reverse uh, blocking scheme where the device is down in the feeder, send the blocking signal back to the protection up here in the case they have discovered a fault down there. So this is a typical protection scheme and instead of implementing this <coughs> with a physical wire carrying a binary signal, we implement it with a goose message and we have these data objects of the 6150 logical nodes that are covered all this goose message to implement that scheme. Sample values finally, and I'm sure we will talk about that also in more details. The rest of these days, sample values typically used instead of having an analog digital conversion in the protection device, and maybe in the controllers for implementing synchro check or whatever. We now do the analog digital conversion down in the process where we have the current and voltage transformers. We typically call this ID merging unit. So there the, the signals, the analog signal is converted into a digital signal and then a stream of the samples is communicated over a network and whoever is needing that information can subscribe to it, can receive it and can build up his algorithms on the basis of that message. So that's typically the sample value service. Talking about uh, 61850 and communication services. Basically, 61850 has a concept where we separate the applications, our object models, from the communication. The reason for that is obvious. Typically, our applications in the substation world they are quite long-term uh, stable. They don't really dramatically change. On the other side, the communication technologies that we are all using are changing quite fast. So what we drafted as a concept was that we introduced what we call an abstract communication service interface, which is defining from an abstract viewpoint the communication methods, the ways how to configure your communication, and then this is mapped on a real communication protocol. Today this is MMS, a stack with MMS or TCP IP. So this part in the middle we call mapping and that's defined in the parts 8.1, 8.2 and 9.2. Here we have the object models that we'll talk about and this is the abstract communication interface. And the stack that we are using today in 8.1 is basically the stack using MMS over ASN1, TCP, IP and Ethernet except goods and sampled value messages which are more or less directly mapped onto Ethernet. Okay, so, so far about communication. Now let's have a look a little bit beyond the communication. What are, are we doing with regards to the data models? Talking about data models, 61850 has a main concept which we call a logical node. A logical node is basically a grouping of information representing functional elements. So what does this mean? We have here an example of a switch gear what are the logical nodes we use there? So typically 61850 defines logical nodes like an XCBR, which stands for a circuit breaker, logical nodes that stand for any other switch, like a disconnecting or earthing switch, voltage transformers, current transformers, but we also model gas density measurement units that you may have in a gas insulated switch gear. So this is all the models that model the signals that you get from the process. So basically within the logic node XCBR, everything is grouped together that you can get as an information from a circuit breaker. Of course, in a substation you also have software applications like protection. So you also have a couple of logical nodes modeling the information you get out of these uh, functions. An example here, a measurement unit where you get uh, rated values for current, for voltage, for active power, whatever you want frequency measurements you get out there. Then we have distance elements, time over current elements, the protection elements that are modeled with the start, with the operate information, but in the future as well with the associated settings that could be also included there. And we have logical nodes like the control functions, controlling of a switch like a circuit breaker or a disconnecting switch. So that's the key element 
of the data model. A logical node basically has, or let's say what we see here is basically an example of such a hierarchic semantic data model. So we have here a logical node circuit breaker, different data objects, somewhere we have the position, we have the status value that can be on, off, or intermediate, or in a fault condition. So basically, the advantage instead of if you look at an example, this is an example from DNP. In DNP, the only identification you have is a point index, and then the manufacturer needs to say, in my device, the point six is the breaker open contact, the point seven is the breaker close contact. The next manufacturer may have it different, the interpretation may be different, <laughs> true or false, 6150 gets away with all of that. You will always know that the position of the breaker you will find in a data object called POS within a logical loading CBR. So there is no variations. You don't need to have signal lists from devices. You know by the standard what the data object means. So a logical node basically is a collection of data objects. So here we have a logical node XSWI for switches. Uh, so we see here mainly again this data object position. What we also see here is this data object is of a type, and this is the second element that we have in the data model of 61850. We call that common data class. Common data classes basically are structured data types used in a certain context. In this case, this is a double point control. So everything that is of a similar kind of information will have the same common data class. So basically, the 61850 part 74 defines all these logical nodes with the data objects, with the detailed semantics, but then it refers to what we call a common data class to give the structure beyond. What we see as well here, we have some data objects that are mandatory, other ones are optional. Optional in the sense of the standard means this can be a functionality that may, not, <laughs> may or may not be supported by the manufacturer, but whenever it is supported, it has to follow this definition. So you cannot say, this is optional, so I name it different and I create my own object. If you have that same functionality, it needs to be of that data object. So this is the common data class. So now, if we look into more detail how this position is structured, then we can look at the definition of the common data class double point control. And basically what we see here, we have a series of attributes the first one, which are really the operational attributes representing the status here. We have a status value, we have quality, timestamp associated. Then we also include certain configuration and description information. As an example, <coughs> you can configure that you are doing select before operate, and in that case, you have an attribute which defines the, the timeout parameter for you select before operate. So we not only group the operational information into the data object, we also add configuration specific information. And this is all defined in the common data classes that are defined in the part 7.3. The data model as such that we have in 61850 is hierarchical. And we already discussed about the logical node, the data object with the data attributes. On top of that, we have the possibility to group data objects in what we call logical devices. And then an IED, which is a server in 61850, may have multiple logical devices where you have grouped the information. This slide summarizes a little bit the aspects of the data model definitions where we find the different elements in the 61850 standard. So basically, starting on top, we have our logical nodes. They are mainly defined for substation automation in the part 7.4. But I have put here two x's because you also have, as I mentioned, the standard now for hydropower plant controllers. And this is 7410. And we have a standard for distributed energy resources. This is 7420. So all these extensions into new domains of 61, uh, where 6150 is used are mainly adding logical nodes. For all the rest, they are using the base concepts as we had defined them already for the substation automation many years ago. So basically, this part 7.4 defines the logical nodes with their data objects. They define 
the semantic of the data object, what does it exactly mean? They define the syntax by referring to a common data class. These common data classes are defined in part 7.3. A common data class is defined as multiple data attributes, like the, position, like the status value that we have seen in the data object position. A data attribute itself can either be of a basic type, can be a Boolean, can be an integer, or it can be a further structure. If the basic type, it refers to a basic type that we define in the part 7.2. If it's a structured, a further structured attribute, we have also in part 7.3 so-called constructed attribute classes defined as an example. We have uh, complex values, vectors, where we have an angle and a, and, a, and a value which are grouped together. So that would be an example of such uh, structured uh, type. These structures type are either of a basic type or they can be itself further structure. So this summarizes more or less where in 61850 do you find information related to the data model aspect. And now we are getting to the third component, which is the engineering. Engineering is as well something that is quite important with regard to 61850. It makes life much easier when it works nicely. It's also probably the most complicated aspect of 61850 because it goes beyond the devices. It goes together with the tools that we get together with the devices. So basically, when we look at the engineering process overview as we define it in 61850, uh, one of the ways 61850 basically support multiple ways how you build your system but one of the preferred ways is what we call the top-down engineering process where you start with a specification, which is typically the single line with the functions. Then when you decide to build your project, your substation, you select the IDs, you allocate them to the different feeders that you have in your single line diagram. You perform the communication engineering, the first step to build the network, allocate IP addresses, whatever you need for the communication. Then you do the signal flow engineering. This is mainly for goose messaging, sampled value messaging. That's more or less replacing what you do when you do a scheme drawing in a conventional design. Now you have to translate this scheme drawing into messages. And I said you have to. In principle, you should not have to. Your tool that you are using should do that for you. And then at the end, you implement the functions in the IEDs. That's where you do the detailed design of the IED. 61850 basically supports that process with various tools that are defined from a functionality viewpoint and with files that are exchanged between these tools. So the process can start that the utility already at specification phase uses what we call a 61850 specification tool and we have a standardized file. All these files are XML based, a web technology basically. We have a standardized file variant that is called the specification description, substation specification description file. It mainly incorporates the single line diagram and the functional requirements in terms of logical nodes as well, maybe the signal list requirements with the data objects. You then, on the other side, need to start selecting IEDs at every device manufacturer that supports IC61850 devices has to create what we call an ICD file, an IED capability description file, which is a, dis a template, again, standardized according to the 61850 substation configuration language that describes the data model of the device, but that also describes communication capabilities, engineering capabilities. So there is a lot of <laughs> valuable information in that file that later on simplifies the engineering process. So the real work starts now when you have selected your devices, when you have your requirements and you do the system engineering by more or less taking your single line diagram, your specification, taking your templates from the IED, creating instances, allocating them to the different feeders where you use them and do all the communication network engineering and the signal flow engineering at the end of the day you get what we call your substation configuration description file, 
that then can be exported again into the ID tool, and based on that, you can configure the individual IDs. This is just the engineering flow, but you can imagine that this file can be used as well for much more as an example for the testing, because this file describes everything that you need to understand the communication in your system. And I'm sure we will have a presentation as well discussing this in more details, how you use it for testing. Uh, so that's about the engineering process. I will not enter into more details here because the next presentation will do that much better than I can do it based on practical experience. Just to summarize what is the STL model, so basically with the substation configuration language, we can represent these elements that are illustrated here of a substation, we can model <laughs> our topology of the substation, the single line diagram. We can model our secondary equipment, our bay controllers, our protection devices, our IEDs with their data models. We can also associate them to the primary equipment so that we can describe which of these relays is protecting the feeder one and which one is protecting the feeder two. We can describe the communication network and we can describe the signal flow. All this is done through the substation configuration language in XML. An SCL file basically has these elements in, and that's the addition 2. We now have added a little bit in addition 2.1, but that's probably for another session. So we have a substation element, we have ID elements, we have communication elements, and we have somewhere some data type elements. But as I mentioned, you will hear much more details about the engineering process in the next presentation. So this is more or less the end of the elements of the basic concept of 61850. So just to summarize them, what we have seen, one of the key concepts of 61850 is to define the semantic data model, which is defined as logical nodes and data objects in the part 7.4 and 7.3. We then define for the information exchange, the abstract communication service interface, which is defined in the part 7.2. This abstract interface needs to be mapped on a real protocol, otherwise you cannot exchange information. And this is defined in the mappings 8192. And once we have that, we can exchange this information that we have defined up here using this abstract services and using the protocol stack as it's defined in the mapping. And in order to configure everything to the level it is needed, we have the configuration model, the 61850 system configuration language, which is defined in IC 61850 part six. So I hope this has given you a little bit an idea of the basic concept. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much.